cool things about going to an open source event are the interesting badges you get to kind of control your access in and out of the event. So this was the badge from the first event last year. Um, as an exhibitor, I get the exhibitor badge, which gives me a certain level of access compared to, you know, a creator or a VIP. There, there are several different badges. But this was the badge I had from the first first year. It's made out of a made out of a circuit board uh, that's then been coated to give it this really cool thing. So it's made out of Garolite circuit board material. But there wasn't any actual like circuits cut in it. It's just you know kind of a cool looking little badge. For this most recent year, 2024, the badge is designed very similarly. Again, it's made out of circuit board. The difference this time. So it actually has a circuit built into it. So there's various listed components on here. And if you install listed components, you'll have a pair of LED light, I, uh, lights on the eyes right here that'll blink back and forth. So it, it looked kind of cool. I, I saw a couple of other people that had the components there that they could go ahead and finish the badge off there at the event. Um, so when I got home, I went ahead and ordered the parts to go ahead and do this, and that's what uh, what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so here we are at my soldering station right here. Um, so I got all the parts, and I've got the badge. Now the parts you can get from basically any electronic supplier. Uh, you know, there's the big ones, Mouser, Jamico, Digikey. I use Digikey. Um, the parts themselves to complete this are relatively cheap. I think it was around $8 in parts here. And that was with me buying a battery from them and buying everything complete from them. You could probably get most of the parts you need for about 5 bucks from any electronic supply house. Um, well, for, for soldering, I'm using my Metcal station right here. Uh, mostly because it's got the very petite tip that I'll be using. Uh, you don't need a fancy soldering station. A cheap little soldering pencil will work for this. There's nothing too fancy about that. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we have to go for here. The instructions are pretty straightforward. So it specifies all the different specific things you need to install. And other than the battery, which will be on the back, all the components themselves will be on the front. So the LED, you'll see all of the components on the front side of the badge, and the back side is where we're going to do all the soldering to put all the all the parts in place. So let's unwrap some of these parts and see what we got. There are two different uh, resistors, different resistance values, so make sure that you <laughs> install them in the right spot. These are the 47 kilo ohm resistors here. When you pull the leads through, kind of bend them to the side a little bit so it doesn't move. Make it real easy for you to solder everything in place. And then when you're done, you just clip the leads off so that they're flush. You guide the legs through the holes. A uh, pair of small pliers to pull them, pull them through. Makes this a lot easier. Kind of bend the legs out just a little bit so that they stays in put when you're soldering it in place. We're just doing LEDs. It's not like we're doing, you know, high-tech radio work or something, but when you see that ever so slight little bit of solder that wicks through the other side, you know that that's a really good, well-done joint. Whereas if you get one where the solder didn't wick through, it's possible that's a cold joint. It didn't quite make perfect connection. If you get something like that, 
just go ahead and warm it back up and reflow it. There, now you can see there's a little bit of solder that come through there, and that's perfect. That's what you want to see. A set of close-cut wire cutters like this are really valuable because when you're done, you can just snip them off real close to the board, which is what you want. You don't want a big punk of wire sticking off. And when you're done, that. When you're done, should look kind of like that. Far and away, the hardest thing to solder onto these is going to be the transistors. First off, they are, you got to make sure you get the, the polarization matched up correctly. So there's a flat on the transistor. It's got to match the flat on uh, the outline. Okay. But when you pull it through, so now you got this, got this there, you got to make sure you solder those three leads that are super tiny. They got to be soldered separately. If the solder leads from one end to the next, then you have a short and it doesn't work. So this part is probably the most difficult of soldering these particular pieces. I'm still going to go ahead and bend the outside legs out so now that part will hold itself in place. Um, and then we'll try soldering them. And as you can see, all three of those leads are both soldered in place and soldered next to each other, so this would be a short. So what do you do? Well, you're going to have to trim those off, and then you're going to have to use a solder wick to try to pull the excess solder off in between them to get them to where they make a good connection but don't short out. This is solder wick. It's basically just braided copper. Um, that will sort of suck up the excess solder and hopefully it'll suck it up in between those leads and we'll be able to have that connected correctly. Maybe not pretty, but they're soldered in place. A pair of magnifying goggles sure helps to look at those to make sure that they are separate, but they are in fact separate now. All right, so the next components are going to be the capacitors and the LEDs. All right, now... The resistors are not polarized, they can go any other way. The transistors, you follow the outline of them. So they definitely go in one direction, but they're easy enough to figure out. Right? The capacitors and LEDs, however, you have to look at the actual unit itself, okay? And this is pretty standard. There's gonna be a Long leg and a short leg. And in the electronics world, the long leg is the positive. And it says that right on the board. Long leg through here on the positive side. So we just got to make sure that we install that correctly and then solder that in place. Now these caps do sort of stick up a bit. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to follow the what DigiKey did, and I think I'm just going to bend them over so that they're more flush with the, with the board, and then probably put a little bit of like hot glue or something like that to hold them in place so they don't move. So that's my game plan. Similar to the other ones, we'll kind of bend the legs out a little bit so it doesn't move around while we're soldering. And now this one's ready to go. Okay, so the caps are in place. I'll just go ahead and put a little glue on them on the back side. So move on to the LEDs. The only component on this board that you're soldering from the front is the battery holder. So you have to flip it over and solder that one from the front side. So make sure those soldering joints look pretty because those are the ones people can see. Okay, so the battery mount is hooked in place. And the LEDs are soldered in place. They look pretty good. So this guy is all completed. The only thing I got left to do now is put a battery in it and see if it works. So here we are with the completed project. Uh, as you can see, the lights blink back and forth like they're supposed to. So I got everything soldered correctly. 
it's kind of a cool little project. Um, about the only thing I wish it had that it doesn't is maybe an on-off switch somewhere. That would have been kind of cool. So this makes me interested. I wonder what he's going to come up with for next year's badge because this is uh, this has been kind of a fun little project. So, and I'll definitely be back. Open Sauce was a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, keep that on your calendar for next year. It's going to be uh, going to be a really cool event.